Okay, today we are going to look at um, um, uh, area of physics. And uh, in particular, we are going to study acceleration in two dimensions. It's important that the learners understand the study of physics in two dimensions. And so today we are going to look at the basics that will enable the learners to have the concepts, to develop concepts that even when they look at more complex problems in physics, it helps them to understand physics well. And as such, uh, I'm not going to take much time in dealing with the, the, the more complex problems. However, we're going to look at the basics. Because if learners understand the basics of physics, it makes it easier for them even to solve more complex problems. And so I'm going to share a few examples, solved examples, and then we hope from there as learners, as well as the teachers, you'll be able to have basic concepts really in understanding motion in two dimensions. And so to start with, we have um, a question here, question one. At t is equal to zero, a particle moving in the x, y plane with constant acceleration has a velocity of six as well as a um, uh, negative three in the y uh, plane and is at the origin. At t is equal to four seconds, the particle's velocity is um, 12 uh, meters per second in the x plane and the positive 12 uh, meters per second in the y plane. So the question goes, find the acceleration of the particle. This is really a very simple question and yet it requires us to, uh, to develop basic concepts of solving equations in two dimensions. And so the expression for calculating acceleration as we know it is that the acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. This is the definition of acceleration. And so in two dimensions, when we are solving such a problem, we have to deal with it independently. We deal with the acceleration in the X plane, as well as acceleration in the Y plane. And so we solve now the question in the X plane. As usual, we have to link it to the definition of acceleration, where we said acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. But this is in the X plane. And therefore, we have to look for the final velocity in the X plane, which is 12 meters per second, and then we subtract 
minus um, six meters per second in the the same plane, which is the x plane, and divided by the time, and this gives us sixty over four, which is equal to one point five meters per square seconds. And so we have calculated the acceleration in the x plane. And so again, we go ahead and calculate the acceleration in the y plane. We do the same. We use the same expression for acceleration, where we said acceleration is equal to final velocity minus the initial velocity over time. And now we are dealing with this problem in the y plane. And so we note that in the y plane, our final velocity was positive 10. And we put positive 10 there, minus in the y plane, the initial velocity was negative three. And so when you subtract 10 minus, minus three, it gives us 13, positive 13 over four. And so 13 divided by four, it gives us 3.25 meters per square seconds. It means that we have dealt with the acceleration in the X plane as well as in the Y plane. And so we can combine the expression now for acceleration. And so we merely get the acceleration in the X plane added to the acceleration in the Y plane. And so this is how we can deal with the such equation of uh, solving actual acceleration in the, um, the two dimensions. And so we go to another question. Question two leads as follows. The vector position of a particle varies in time according to the expression where the position vector is 40 in the x plane as well as negative 10 uh, t squared in the y plane. And so the question is as follows. Find expressions for velocity and acceleration as a function of time. And the question number B is determine the particle's position and velocity at t, which is time at t, which is time at three seconds. And so to solve the first part of the equation, we can say that we can find the acceleration, the expression of acceleration and the expression of velocity, first of all, okay, in two dimensions. And we merely differentiate. So we say dr dt, that's it for the position. So we differentiate the position for us to enable us to calculate the velocity. We differentiate the position vector and the coordinates in order for enable us to um, actually get uh, the velocity. And when we differentiate 40, we get four. And when we differentiate negative 10 t squared, we get 20 t squared. And so this is the velocity of, this is the velocity function. This is the velocity of the particle. We merely differentiate the position coordinate. Again, now we need to make an expression of the acceleration as a function of time, as a function of time. And so all we need to do again is to differentiate the velocity. 
So, coordinates. So, when we differentiate the velocity, which is the expression velocity here, which we found, and so you can say, when you differentiate four, you get actually zero. And when you differentiate negative 20 T, you get 20. And therefore we have found the expression as a function of time for acceleration. We go now to the second part of the, the question, which was asking us to find, to determine the particle's position as well as its velocity at time t is equal to three seconds. And mainly all what we do here is that we substitute three seconds in the expression for the position particle. And therefore, from the position particle, you note that we had uh, this expression, 40 minus 10 T squared. And therefore, that's why you notice that here, we are multiplying four times three, because the time at that point to be three seconds. And, uh, and therefore, you substitute equally, where it is minus 10 T squared, you substitute the time and you get 12 minus 10. The i and j denotes actually that the i is for the x plane and the j is for the y plane. And therefore the position, uh, the particle's position is uh, uh, in the x plane, it is 12 meters while in the uh, y plane, it is negative 20 meters. Then we go ahead and calculate the particle's velocity at t is equal to three seconds, where the time is three seconds. Similarly, all we need to do is to look for the velocity that we calculated in the first part of the equation. And we found that the velocity was four minus 20 T. And therefore, where there is time, we substitute three seconds. So in this expression here, we will merely substitute three seconds where there was time here. And therefore we get four minus 10, which is actually the parts cause velocity. And therefore, I hope we have learned uh, the basics of um, actually expressing velocity, position, as well as acceleration in two dimensions. The next lesson that we are going to look at next time, we'll be actually looking at uh, motion in two dimensions and we'll discuss projectile motion. And uh, therefore, uh, this lesson is meant for people who are actually starting to do advanced level physics or uh, physics at the university level or at a college level. And therefore, I wish you all the best that uh, you have today understood the basics of physics. And therefore, you ensure that you subscribe to my YouTube as well as um, my lesson so that you can get a wealth of knowledge in understanding physics. Physics is, understand, is understood, fully understood when you can conceptualize the basics. So I end the lesson here. Okay.